Hello again, this is Dr. H, and I have another YouTube video coming your way about the conduction pathway of electricity through the heart. So what we're after today is a look at how electricity travels through the heart. And it all starts from autorhythmic cells found within the heart. And autorhythmic cells are really interesting little clusters of cells that actually, uh, I like to call, are leaky. <laughs> and they're actually leaky to ions. They're going to be leaky to calcium and, and sodium. And that is going to allow for those positive charges to enter those autorhythmic cells, right? They're moving into the cell. And as those positive cells enter those autorhythmic cells, it's going to depolarize those autorhythmic cells until some voltage-gated channels get activated to open. And then, boom, they're going to create an action potential, a surge of electricity that's going to move through the heart. And as it does, it will cause cardiomyocytes, the heart muscle cells, to contract. So let's start with the very beginning of the conduction pathway at what's called the um, natural pacemaker cells. The natural pacemaker cells are found way up here, actually in the sinus of the right atrium. And they're a small cluster of autorhythmic cells that lie here. All right, and the way these SA node cells are going to work SA, sinoatrial node. So what's going to end up happening is exactly as I just said, where these cells are going to be extra leaky to calcium and sodium, not in that order, actually, sodium, then calcium, and then voltage-gated calcium channels are going to open, and you're going to get a surge of electricity that starts rushing from this point, point and it's going to start moving out away from the SA node through specialized conduction pathways, specialized current moving pathways of tissue. And they kind of move all of this current throughout the entire atria. Okay, it's actually kind of a figure eight formation, but this will work. This pathway of specialized conducting fibers are called inter- nodal pathway or pathways. Okay, the internodal pathways are gonna be taking current and moving them through both the right and the left atria. And what did I say earlier, right, is as that electrical current hits the cardiomyocytes, it's gonna cause those cardiomyocyte cells to contract. So looking at this, you might actually start to come out with a little bit of common sense logic that says, all right, well, if the electrical current hits the atria first, well, what's the first part of the heart that's going to start to contract? And the answer is the atria. Both the right and the left atria are going to contract first. We'll come back and revisit that in a later lecture. Now, all this current is going to actually accumulate and slow down right in this next cluster of autorhythmic cells. Okay, these autorhythmic cells are right on the border of the right atria and the right ventricle. So they called them the AV node, where AV stands for atrioventricular. So this is the atrioventricular node. And all of this current is going to move down into the AV node. And the AV node has heavy innervation by the parasympathetic nervous system. Rest and digest. And it has what's called parasympathetic tone, which means the parasympathetic nervous system is always somewhat active on this AV node, slowing the current down and slowing the heart rate down to the normal resting heartbeat. This is now going to lead the AV node to finally start to descend down into the lower portion of the heart, into the interventricular septum. It's going to have to go through a very specialized group 
of conducting fibers that don't branch, that don't spread out. Okay, this is called the bundle of hiss, otherwise just known as the AV bundle. Now this bundle, well, it's different, say for instance, from the internodal pathways, because the internodal pathways, if a small portion of the internodal pathway gets blocked, damaged by an infarct or something along those lines, then, well, that current can still travel down to the AV node through a different part of the pathway. But if this bundle of Hiss gets damaged, there is no other way for current to move down into the interventricular septum. It's called a complete bundle block, and it's very dangerous on a patient and can cause um, heart failure and heart, and basically the heart to stop in the long run. From the bundle of Hiss, this conducting fiber starts to branch and it starts to move out and it actually starts to branch out into some of the papillary muscles that lie, that are attached to the interventricular septum here, but it continues to move down until it reaches the apex of the heart. This grouping of fibers here well, they're branching, right? They're branching out through the interventricular septum, so they call them the bundle branches. Until they finally reach the very tip of the heart. And at the very, very tip of the heart, the apex of the heart, these fibers are going to start to spread out through both the right and the left ventricle and they're going to rush all the way out here. Lots and lots of branches moving out through both the left and the right ventricles. And this is what brings the current out to the ventricular cardiomyocytes. These are called Purkinje fibers. Purkinje, P-U-R. K-I-J-E fibers. And these are very specialized fibers. I might have just written off of the board for you all. I apologize about that. Purkinje fibers. That'll help you all out. Get rid of that so you can't see that there. Purkinje fibers. All right, so now let's think about what I was saying earlier. As the current leaves the SA node, now this action potential is traveling through the atria and hitting cardiomyocytes of the atria, allowing the atria to contract first. Then that current is going to concentrate in the AV node, which has parasympathetic tone, slowing that current down, delaying the current reaching the ventricles. Okay, this is called the uh, the nodal delay, okay? This delay now is going to pass down through the bundle of Hiss, pass out through the bundle branches before making it to the apex of the heart where the Purkinje fibers finally reach the ventricular cardiomyocytes and then the ventricles contract. That's called the conduction pathway. Let's write this down as a flow chart and then we'll be all done. Okay, so we're gonna say the conduction pathway starts at the SA node. And the SA node is going to travel out into the, in, the internodal pathway. So from the SA node, the current moves into the internodal pathway. From the internodal pathway, all of that current is going to get slowed down in the AV node before passing down through a very specific bundle of conducting uh, tissue known as the bundle of Hiss. From the bundle of Hiss, that current is going to spread out through the interventricular septum I think this is the right color <laughs> through the interventricular septum into the bundle branches before finally spreading out 
branching out into this massive dendritic tree basically all these roots of the tree if you want to think about it like that called the Purkinje fibers and one last thing to add to our flow chart uh, by the way I just want to show you diagram flow chart they are the same thing nobody should study just one way always try to make sure that you're studying in multiple different ways all these ways are visual and they are writing so in essence we're getting a little dose of all sorts of learning styles here and the second you start to study in this fashion pun right as you're branching out into multiple different learning techniques well now it's going to stick now it creates LTP. Now you got long-term potentiation and that stuff becomes a long-term memory. And that's what we're after, I think. I think. I'm pretty sure that's what we're after. So just as a quick more, one more reminder, right? As the current spreads out through the internodal pathways, what else can we think about here? Atrial contraction. ran out of room you guys will be okay whereas it's not until it's reached the per Purkinje fibers down here and everything below this point right now we're going to get ventricular contraction where this is really going to come back into play is when you guys are learning about ekgs so i highly recommend and I'll try to make sure that I reference this YouTube video. But as you're learning about EKGs later on, I'll do another video on that. You will need to use the conduction pathway information to better understand how to look and uh, and under and um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Can't think of it. Don't matter. Look and uh, actually be able to evaluate an EKG. All right. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, Dr. H and uh, take care of yourself and others.